Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome back to another Stripe tutorial for Healing Arch Practitioners. If you are someone who is just starting out in your business or you're already using Stripe in your business or you're looking for free ways, easy ways to start accepting money from your customers as you launch your business, then Stripe is the perfect tool for you. And like I mentioned before, it is a fundamental tool because most likely any other software or any other tool that um, allows you to accept payment, maybe it's your booking software, example, for example, Acuity, you are going to need Stripe to process payments inside of your Acuity booking calendar. If you didn't check out any of my previous videos, make sure to check those out because I walk you through all the ins and outs of using Stripe so that you are a Stripe, not an expert, but so you're pretty damn good at Stripe and you know how to use it. All right, with confidence. And that is what we're all about here is using these tools with confidence, building our competence so that we can be confident with what we're doing. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through setting up your products. I'm gonna walk you through setting up your payment link and your invoices. So let's jump in. All right, my friends. So the first thing before you can create invoices, before you can create payment links, you need to create a product. What is it that people are paying you for? So over on the left hand side, we are going to find this window here and we are going to click on more. All right. So more is going to open up this window. It's going to give us some more features um, from Stripe. And right here under manage your products, we are going to find product catalog. And this is where we're going to create our first test product. All right. So uh, this is if you haven't done anything, we are in test mode. So uh, make sure that you are also in test mode as you're doing this. This is just super easy. You can come up here at the top right hand corner and toggle on this uh, feature here so that you're not doing anything in live mode. It gives you a, a good opportunity for you to practice. So um, here in this window, we're going to add a product. And I'm just going to uh, create a test product here. And I'm just going to call it test product. All right. And then uh, obviously you're going to give it the real name of your product. Actually, let's do something more realistic. All right. So let's go yoga and Reiki, Reiki, yoga and Reiki event. All right. So we're setting, let's pretend like we're setting something up for an event. Okay. So if you're somebody who uh, hosts events and you do group events, facilitate group events, then this is perfect for you. All right. So yoga and Reiki events and the description, this is something that you are going to experience um, describe your event, what, you know, what the product is, what it is, what it's about. Make sure that you're detailed here. This is something that shows up um, when people are purchasing. And a lot of times what I find people make the mistake of is not being detailed right here. And sometimes depending on where your traffic is coming from, if they're not coming directly from your post or they don't know the time or the dates of this event, this, it, it can cause some confusion. And I definitely have been in that situation myself as I'm signing up for practitioners group events and it becomes confusing. I have to go back to uh, their post or find their post, find what time or date and date their event is. And you can just make it so much easier for the customer and not risk, you know, them leaving and then not coming back to, you know, purchase the ticket to your event. You can just do that right here and you avoid that problem, all right? So you can lose customers that way. All right, so experience, I'm just gonna be super brief here. The benefits of yoga and, I don't know, cleanse your energy with Reiki. And then I'm gonna include, so this is, go, I'm just gonna include the location. So this would be the location of our location, our studio in Tempe, Arizona. Um, at the Healing Tree Collective, and I'm going to say Monday. This probably does not even make sense. Okay, so I'm just putting in dates here. I don't even know if that is actually a Monday at, um, let's just do 2 to 4 p.m. All right. So this is, again, super, super important. I highly recommend that you give it a good description. Do not be lazy on this one. Do not just be, you know, half-ass it. Give it a good description. Use ChatGPT if you need to. Make sure to include the location. Make sure to include the time and the dates of, of your event. So again, you avoid people leaving because maybe they didn't see it prior to coming to this um, checkout page 
and then they're having to go back and then you you risk that person not coming back to purchase their ticket so an image i would highly recommend that you upload an image to this i'm just going to let's see what i have here in my files i'm going to um just input let's see let's see let's see come on oh here we go okay let's just say that this was you know my event and this was me in this photo um, highly recommend, you know, just filling out every single one of these fields that you get the statement descriptor, definitely highly recommend, you know, definitely recommend that you put this uh, statement descriptor. I I've explained this to you in a previous video where I go over what the statement descriptor is and it's showing up in people's bank bank statements. And, and you don't want people to, uh, you want people to recognize what it is that they're paying for so that they don't, you know, later come back and dispute the charge or anything like that. And then, so what you can put is yoga and reiki event that's perfect um, we can just leave that as is the metadata we can just leave that as is you don't have to mess with that the features list this one unless you were doing a pricing table you don't need to do this one right here it's not gonna it's not gonna show any features or anything like that uh, the pricing table is something that we can go over in another video we won't talk about that one here because that one is a little bit more extensive so um for a event and actually let's go ahead and just do this right since i'm talking about doing it right we can just go ahead and do that capitalize the title there this is going to be for a one-off payment so make sure you select one off all right you do have the option of setting up a recurring but this would be something that is like a recurring membership or something like that all right so for this event we are charging 40 dollars and we are going to complete this product here so now we have our first product we can see the preview over here on the right hand side and then we are going to add a product all right so now that we have our product created up here um at the top tabs here you can set up coupons if you wanted to create a coupon for your customers you can we're not doing any shipping rates we're not doing tax rates and again like i mentioned we're doing pricing tables we can cover that in a separate video but this is actually a really really cool feature if you have different plans for what it is that you offer <clears throat> may or may not be applicable to you all right so now i'm going to walk you through setting up a payment link for this product all right so now if you wanted to just set up a just simple payment portal you can send a link takes them to that payment page that you saw earlier and uh, uh, you know you avoid having to send an invoice or anything like that it's simple to use you can add it to your link in bio uh, for people to purchase a ticket all right so we are going to create um, at the top right hand corner we're going to see this new button right here we're going to go ahead and select new and now uh, we are going to select product and or subscriptions okay so make sure that that one is selected and then we are going to find a product. So we just see, we can, we will see that uh, we have our yoga and Reiki event. This is why you need to set up your product first. Otherwise it won't come up here <clears throat> or it'll give you the option to add a new product. So same thing. All right, we're going to select our yoga and Reiki event. I would allow customers to adjust the quantity. So let's just say if they wanted to purchase two or three tickets, go ahead and let them do that. I would definitely, um, um limit this maybe if you want to do between zero and five totally up to you however you want to do it but you can see here um already see uh over here in the preview page you can see that there's the details button right there and over here in the preview page you can see that our description experience the benefits of yoga and cleanse your energy at the healing tree collective monday march 3rd 2024 and then you know the time that i put in there again just be repetitive as possible in every step of the customer journey from social media to the payment <clears throat> all the way down to the confirmation message that they get all right so that's why that's important right there back to this you can again adjust the quantity however you want it to be now down here down at the bottom if you want to collect customers addresses you can do that um this would totally make sense i don't see people you know um, freaking out or getting scared or getting spooked by having to input their address because you are collecting payment and that is pretty normal for people to do require customers to provide a phone number now this one is also <clears throat> something that maybe might spook your customers or an extra step to um, 
you know, a bottleneck area, you can choose this to, to collect the phone number or not. Just be forward thinking about it. Like, why are you collecting their phone number? If you, if it's not necessary, if you don't actually need their phone number, then I would go ahead and turn this one off. And I am definitely going to just turn this one off because for the most part, we aren't you really using um, anybody's phone numbers as of now to, um, to do any sort of, sort of email more, you know, uh, not email marketing, any post marketing or anything like that. <clears throat> All right. So if for the advanced options, if you wanted to down below, you have the options to add custom fields. And this is something that you would want to set up, um, in your setting sections. You don't need to mess with the, this one. This one is not important. Allow promotion codes. This one is definitely one that you might want to consider. Um, this would be something that you set up in your coupons and, and then allow people to input that coupon code inside of here. So something to consider if you want to do something promotional or, you know, the first three people or the first five people, or maybe it, you're sending out to specific people that you have been, uh, inviting them to come and maybe, you know, you want to offer them $5 off or something like that to your event. So that's, that's awesome. A uh, cool little feature that you can have there. Save payment details for future use. I would highly recommend that you uh, do this one because if they will be a customer later on down the road, then um, you have those payment details already in your account. All right, so just be safe with that one. Um, obviously, don't abuse that. Okay, require customers to accept your terms of services. If you have a terms of service, uh, then this is something that you would you can actually add there right there. And so, um, definitely, uh, have this one. I recommend having this one. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And this is also really cool. I just saw this one down here. You can have the call to action to be pay. You can have the call to action to be book. All right. So if you're setting this up to actually book like an appointment with you, a one-on-one -on -one consultation, then you would, I mean, I would recommend using the book. It just makes it, uh, more, uh, I guess people are just able to recognize, you know, that they're actually booking an appointment. It just kind of seems a little bit more fluid. It, it flows a little better versus the pay. It's not going to do anything different. It's going to be the same thing. Um, but if you wanted to just be a little bit more fancy and use the book one, definitely uh, recommend doing that one. The other one that I thought was really cool is the donate one. So if you wanted to set up something where you're actually accepting donations and this is the payment portal that you want to set up for it, and obviously this wouldn't be yoga and Reiki event. This would be something else like, um, you know, uh, whatever your charity is or something, whatever your event is that you're doing, it would be, uh, something different that people are actually donating their money to. So I thought this was pretty cool that you can change the call to action buttons over here in the, in the payment section. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this one as pay and um now after payment okay so this completes everything for the payment page now for the after payment right here what do you want to happen what after they purchase their ticket okay so again the description section so shows right there i love that even on the confirmation page it just reminds them the location the dates and the time of the event that is that they're that they just purchased so on the confirmation page, I highly recommend that you replace this with the default custom message. All right. And if not, uh, you also have the option, I'm going to jump back to this one, but you also have the option to do a, um, sorry, a confirmation page. So like if you created a landing page where they had to download something or they, uh, maybe a portal for a membership or something like that, then you can redirect them there after they have paid their, their payment to access whatever it is that they're, that they're accessing or that they, they just purchased. So this is really cool uh, feature that you can use to redirect your customers after they've purchased. But if not, we're setting this up for an event. Okay. So for this, you can re I would highly recommend that you replace this with your custom message. And I would say something along the lines of, uh, thank you for joining us for Reiki. What did I say? Reiki and yoga, yoga and Reiki. Oops. At the healing tree collective we look forward to seeing you soon 
So something simple like that is what I would recommend. Again, just personalize it a little bit more. Maybe you could even just put your name there. Um, sorry, I would just do something like this. I don't know. If you wanted to just put your name there, just kind of personalize that message to make it just feel a little bit more personable versus the generic, you know, thank you for your business or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that like that. Everything is all set up. And now we will go ahead and create our link. So this is what this looks like. Now you have your payment methods that you are accepting card, you're accepting Apple Pay, you're accepting Google Pay, and you can manage your payment methods and change up whatever payment methods you, you prefer uh, right here in this area, which there's a whole bunch of different uh, you know, payment methods. Affirm, you can do buy now, pay later. If you uh, have something that is a little bit more high ticket, you can offer those options. There's a whole bunch of different uh, payment methods that you can set up here without code. It makes it super easy for you to do. All right, so if we go back, we are going to go back into our payment links and let's go ahead and select this one and see what else we have here. All right, so now it gives you the option up here right above. It gives you some um, stats, some analytics for all of your payments, all of your payment links that you have created, how much you've generated over that period of time. It gives you the link right here, right above. You can copy this to the clipboard. You can create a QR code and you can create a buy button, which is going to be something that you would input on your website since you have this code right here. All right, so that would be something if you had a website, but not the case here. Most likely you're going to be using the QR code and the link. You can go ahead and take that link and again, input that into your link in bio so people can sign up for your event. And one more quick little tip here. If you wanted to set up this test product, if you found yourself, oh, this was actually legit, this actually worked. I don't wanna have to redo it all over again. You do have this option right here to copy over to live mode, which makes it easy. It just transfers it right over to your live mode so that you don't have to redo it all over again. All right, my friends, so that wraps it up for this video. Yes, I take it back. We are just going to cover products in this one. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through setting up your invoices, so make sure to check out that video. If you haven't yet subscribed and you are a healing arts practitioner and you want to continue to grow your business and learn the tools that you need for your business, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't joined us inside of the Real Magic community, where we dive even deeper into all this stuff, an education hub for all healing arts practitioners. I'm going to link that down in the description below. Make sure to check that out. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.